Welcome ghosts back to Bullet Catcher Gaming and welcome to a new video series called The Recon Report. Firstly, let me apologize. Um, it's been quite a few months since the uh, last video and that has been just for many reasons, but mainly due to work. But obviously I don't wanna come in with a brand new series with loads of excuses and things like that. What I just wanna tell you is, is that we are back and we're gonna be trying to get back to a kind of full time-ish schedule. We've decided to come up with the recon report. Now, one of the reasons though, we're going down this like semi podcast format for some videos, not all videos, still gonna be doing videos with visuals and things. I've got some that are being finalized at the moment. But it makes it so much easier for me. I don't get a lot of time to create content, but I also want to still be massively involved within the community. Obviously, this channel's been going for quite a few years now, and I've had people asking, where are you, and things like that, and which I really appreciate. Thank you. So by doing this, it means it's, it's, it is a bit of less editing, things like that, which some people might say, oh, that's really lazy. And it's not that it's lazy, it's just that sometimes before when I was trying to do main podcasts and things like that, I was going to bed at like three o'clock in the morning and then getting up at six and it was just, I just I don't know if anyone remembers, but I just kept getting ill all the time. And um, so this is an easier format for me to do. Now, the point of Recon Report is to focus on one specific area of Ghost Recon every time we do it. We want to talk about the needs and wants of it what you think of it and also we can move beyond ghost recon if people want us to um i think the follow we're going to do one on ubisoft themselves because obviously there's a lot of um a lot of issues at the moment in regards to ubisoft a lot of newsworthy things to talk about so joining me obviously as the regular kind of co-host of this is sandy lands 85 which hopefully everyone knows sandy by now um he's obviously on the discord Links in the description below if you want to join the Discord. Now, what we'd really like is for you to kind of give us feedback um, and tell us what is it that you want us to talk about? Are there specific things? It could be anything from weapons to vehicles to the world to, you know, NPCs to the raid to whatever it is you want. Old Ghost Recon games, similar games, other, just anything you want. The new game, things we want, surveys, anything. You, you can kind of tell us and we'll take your feedback and kind of um, and talk about it. Now, they're not going to be as long as podcasts, and we are still going to be doing some podcasts. It's just they're much harder to arrange. Um, this is a lot easier. Sandy and I both on the same time schedule, so it's just easier. Um, but yeah, so we'd love to hear your comments. Um, let us know down below. Now, we thought we'd just start off by talking about Project Over. Obviously, hasn't been a lot of news, but there's been several leaks, and I think some of which people are very aware of, and maybe some others that I'm not sure people are that aware of. So we thought we would just cover everything we know so far, good or bad, give our opinions, and then you give us your opinions. And, you know, we can always do, um, I think what would be nice is to do some recon reports just solely based sometimes off of your feedback as well so if we get specific feedback in specific areas we could kind of sit talk about that the good thing is with these is that we can they can be 10 minutes long they can be half an hour long it doesn't really matter um so yeah so we're going to get going um it's uh, obviously sandy here having a coffin fit um and um we're going to get going now so everything that we currently know about project over now, let's go through very, very quickly the things that people know, because Tom Henderson obviously confirmed some of these across multiple websites earlier on in the year, that it was being called Project Over. They were returning to a first-person view, since obviously the first installment was in 2001. It's going to be a tactical shooter, drawing inspiration from the most popular kind of FPS shooters, including... Call of Duty Modern Warfare, kind of Battlefield, um, and Ready or Not. It's going to take place in a southeastern country um, where a fictional name and war is taking place. So it, the goal is going to be to infiltrate the conflict area, to conduct secret missions and identify the traitor, whatever that may mean. 
um, controversial scenes. So I think what they're going for is kind of, uh, it says that there might be a man shooting a child or because they're holding a bomb and, and things like that. So you're going to see kind of graphic, very adult scenes in there. Um, according to Henderson, he has seen a fragment of the gameplay. Now, don't want to go too much into this because most people know all of this stuff. Anyway, so let's just start on that brief one. Obviously, the big elephant in the room and has been for many months covered by a lot of other really good YouTubers as well is the fact that they're moving back to first person. Now, that doesn't mean to say that they might not add a third person or they might already there might be a third person, but maybe it wasn't ready. Whoever showed Tom, maybe it wasn't ready to show him. I don't know. But it's weird that it's not in there and it's not mentioned. So I'm presuming it is first person. Sandy, what are your overall thoughts on the, the going back to FPS? Uh, I mean, I can understand why maybe if they've looked recently at the PC mods for Wildlands and Breakpoint, why they could conceive that going back to first per first person might be advantageous to them. Uh, but everything I've seen, the vast majority of the comments, I mean, I'm always on Reddit, the Facebook pages, anywhere basically where there's Ghost Recon content, I'm in there somewhere. And I'd say the vast majority of the fan base nowadays, I believe anyway, would much prefer it to stay in third or at least have the option to have both. I think that that had to have both. Um, I think that if this is true, it's a huge mistake. And that's not to say I don't like playing first-person games, because I do, but I just think it's a massive, massive mistake to ditch it. It's what everybody knows. Everyone knows this game series now as a third-person shooter. So to move away from that, I just think... You know, if you look at, say, the surveys and this channel, other channels, you can read what people say. There's a general consensus. And that's not to say that people don't have other opinions uh, because they do or more niche opinions about where this game. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. But overall, most you can kind of garner exactly the types of things that people would like from a new game. And I think maybe we've been so focused on we want repelling and all this type of stuff that we just took it for granted that the game would be third person. And I think it's kind of knocked a lot of people sideways a little bit, like what on earth are they doing? Why would they do that? Why? I mean, it's the nut, you know, even in our surveys, it was pretty much like it was bang on. I can't remember what it was, but it was not 90 something percent people and they were saying that they'd be happy with both but overall it was you know if you could only have one people wanted third unless of course you know they're doing this because they want ghost recon to reach a bigger audience maybe they're saying which i don't understand because wildlands supposedly sold about 16 million copies that's already and one of their biggest selling games of all time I don't really understand why you need a bigger audience. You you had the perfect game to work from, which, you know, I've talked about before. So that to me makes no sense. Um, I just don't know why. I don't know why you would move away from that. I don't know why you would think that that would be a really good idea. To me, it's like instantly alienating, I would say, at least half of the current Ghost Recon fans. Some people might say I'm over-exaggerating there. I'm just going by the amount of comments that I see, and it's been huge for months and months. The amount of comments where people say, I'm not buying this if it's if it's first only. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of them. Now, I know they're wanting to sell millions and bring in people from, say, you know, by the sounds of it, they probably want to bring in Call of Duty players. You know, that's what he said. So... I don't know. Do you think this could come back to bite them, though? Massively. I think it's a really big risk to to go back to first person, as you, as you stated, with how long it's been in third now. And, I mean, you look at some... 
you look at all the other first person shooters that are coming out in the next what year, two years, three years, it'd be quite easy for the next Ghost Recon to get just lost in in the mix with everything else. I think third person was what made the game unique. It was the only tactical shooter that had that full time third person perspective. You know, Call of Duty's always gonna be putting a new game out every year. You look at like Grey Zone War uh Grey Zone Warfare and there's you know, a couple of other games coming out along the lines, uh was it Blood One Black Brothers or something like that. But you know, there's there's plenty there's there's a whole plethora of first person shooter games and I think I think Ubisoft are just get a day with the normal day and miss the mark. Yeah, I I I I kind of get what you're saying there. So just to let everyone know as well, is that because we're not really going to be using this as a lot of um, you know, to show a lot of video or anything like that, we can, and if it's very specific, we will. I can layer it in. But overall, so rather than just show you screenshots of any of this stuff that we're going to talk about, um, instead I'll just put the links to the articles in the description below so you can go and find it yourself in case you're you want to read any of this stuff. So there's another piece here from um, gamepressure.com. And this is quite interesting because obviously everyone has heard of Project Over by now. But they say that obviously regards to the rumors that there are castings that have been organized by Ubisoft. It says the company has been looking for actors for a game currently operating under a title of Project Gone. Now, that's interesting because we've not, this is the first time I'd heard of Project Gone, which was on this article. And this article's not new. It's a little, it's, it's still a few months old. But I just think you don't hear it talked about very much online. So that's why I'm wondering how many people are aware of it or not. Um, but the, it's described as a tactical military video game about navigating the intricacies of war. And they believe it is Ghost Recon. Now, it could be that, over was its original code name and because it got leaked they've called it something else or it could be that gone is a completely different game that we don't know about or who knows but it must be if it's another game that we don't know about it must be at the point where they are in full development for it because obviously they are casting actors for it so you know it's probably a few years in down the line at least uh which we presume that ghost recon is so is it gone? Is it over? I don't know. I really don't know at the moment, but it's interesting. Um, so, but it does say obviously the action of the project gone is set to take place in Southeast Asia, which is obviously what the previous leak had talked about. Um, and it said a character named Kwa Win, uh, sorry if I butchered that, who will most likely be a villain. This is a former head of the National Secret Police. He started acting on his own and he's trying to incite a revolution in the region. The announcement also listed several other roles of soldiers and agents who will most likely join the Ghosts unit. Now, it does sound, I know there's not a lot of info there, really, but it is interesting because obviously it does go on to say that about the previous rumours, the Southeast Asian country with a fictional name and war is raging. So the Southeast region, so would they be making two separate games that will both happen to be set in the Southeast region, Southeast Asian region? Very doubtful. Very doubtful. So I think perhaps you can look at this that Gone and Over are one of the same thing. And this most probably is for Ghost Recon. They talked about maybe seeing it, um, if I remember rightly, did it say an end of 2025 on that original leak, early 2026, I believe, or at some point 2026? Yeah. So you would imagine if this is from a few months ago and their casting actors were in 2024, sounds probably about right, I would imagine. Uh, I don't know too much about how and where different, you know, AAA game development takes place, but that's that's you know, a couple of years before makes sense. Um, so yeah, that that's an interesting. What do you make of that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I found this this article recently myself, and there was a few things. Obviously, I know it does mention in the article that there's there's a speculation as well that this could be another go. Uh, sorry, Rainbow Six. 
But given what we know about for the previous leak, a lot of the stuff does seem to kind of correlate and correspond to what was said about Project Over. So, I mean, obviously, Ubisoft are doing what they do best and staying tight-lipped and treating a, treating the fan base like mushrooms. But I think this again, this is this has been out since June, and I haven't really heard anybody talking about this. No, neither Which have I. I. Think's I. Unusual. It's, quite, it's fascinating, really. Which which leads us on to the third one. Now, this I've seen mainly screenshotted on Reddit, and both of us kind of looked for the original post, and I don't think we actually found it. We found you 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 sent me this one, which I'm looking at at the moment. And this was from uh, gamingfora.com, where it was actually a person called Gamer Dude um, who posted this. Though, like I said, I have seen this elsewhere. Just I don't actually know where the original details of this came from. And it talks about Project Gone again. It has nothing to do with that other article. It says. Uh, storyline gone is a tactical military video game about navigating the complexities of war and they are casting for the following roles and it actually gives the details the first one is the name of Raphael, and it's a male in his mid to mid 30s kind of late to, to late 40s he's white veteran soldier spec ops operator now that could fit, fit, obviously, Ghost Recon. That could fit Rainbow Six um, or a game that we are not aware of. I don't know. Um, it does go into a bit more details, but I won't go through the, every single bit of his kind of character. Like I said, I'll link it below if you want to go and read them all. Um, the second one is Ringo, between 30 and 40, an Indonesian-American or Asian-American accent, they said. But no, it then says Ringo speaks with an American accent. And it even goes into saying we don't need actors to specialise in a specific accent. Um, it goes into quite a bit about the fact that he's charismatic and unshakable, but he's haunted by a hidden past. It does give you quite a bit of detail. So check out the, just the, the links below. Um, there's another one called Spengler, another male aged between 30 and 40, Japanese-American or South American origin. And this person is the team's forensic specialist. Now, if they're going into a war zone, which is what we were told it was, you can imagine that someone who's got forensic skills could be useful. Um, there's another character, Uhara. She is a female between 30 and 40, American, Middle Eastern, or American, North African but with an American accent, but she grew up in, in, she grew up in New Mexico. She's laid back and she's a sniper. It's kind of reminding me a little bit of the kind of operators from Breakpoint. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, obviously once we go down this, uh, there is something that I'll touch on later on um, about potential location, but the, as for the, so far what we believe to be operators, the only thing that stands out to me is Spengler, because that character seems to be slightly off for what I'd expect to hear for a tier one operator. Like, I, I know it just says forensic specialist, but that that in my head doesn't automatically take me to tier one. Just to fill in the gaps there, uh, his was the shortest one, so I'll read it out fully. Obviously, I said he's about his age, American accent, uh, Japanese American or South American. It says that he is the team's forensic specialist, emotionally unavailable, unable to connect with others unless it's a topic he's interested in. He's cerebral and intense. Uh, where others see chaos and danger, he sees stability and purpose. It's the shortest description of all of the characters that 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 are on here. Let's hit on some of the others quickly. So there's also Arn, spelled A-H-N, another female, mid-20s to mid-30s, Thai or Thai American. Um, looks like they could be some kind of um, uh, 
let's see here. So, oh, there could be some kind of person who's um, maybe got, they've got lots of different, they can speak lots of different languages. So maybe this character feels like a someone who's going to be, um, you know, talking to the locals and stuff on behalf of the team, perhaps, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, and then there is Kiwa Wynn. Male, 40s, 50s, Thai or Thai American, or role is primarily English speaking. Um, he's a major, so basically saying he's the head of the National Secret Police. So this is somebody who I presume lives in the country that they're operating in. Um, he is decisive, committed, athletic, fit with a military past. So he could be an enemy or he could be a a good guy it does say this is a lead role so one would presume it's like maybe one of the main characters from the the country that it's set in um and that's kind of all that they've that's it i mean they those are really we've searched high and low and those really are all the leaks that there isn't really anything else at all you could say i mean it does all add up all of those things do seem to kind of come together I do think that those are more likely Ghost Recon than than say Rainbow Six. Personally, I, I find Rainbow Six. I've played that game a lot. Not that I know all, the, all of their real names, but I knew a lot of the original cast. And I think if they were making a kind of open world Rainbow Six game, they would stick to very much the original cast because that I still think they're the 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 big hitters as such. Um, and I don't recognize those those names at all. Um, obviously, if you're a big Rainbow Six player and you're listening to this and you think, oh, yeah, you th or you think that you know what this is or what it could be, then obviously, please let us know. We'd be really interested. So go on, Sandy. You, you wanted to hit on some points. Yeah, so um, one of the things that seems to be a recurring theme in this final article contradicts what I think a lot of the fan base have currently came to believe. So obviously the very first the very first one mentioned the Nyman War. And a lot of people have jumped onto that originally and and believe it's going to be in Mongolia. Now and it is true there was Nyman the Nyman tribe did originate in Mongolia. Uh, there they are in a few other places. But I always wondered if the Nyman part was just a red heron because the one thing that stands out for the majority of this is where they keep on talking about Thai accents or being able to speak Thai, which to me sounds like it's got to be much more south, much more southeast, you know, potentially much closer, if not in Thailand, but around the Thailand area. You know, we've focused so long on is it going to be Mongolia it's for the Naiman thing, but. I wonder if that's just, again if that's just a red heron. Yeah, it'd be interesting as well because obviously if it is going to be in that type of region, that Southeast Asia, really interesting because obviously immediately when you think of it, you automatically think of kind of lush green lands, mountainous areas, that kind of stuff. That's what comes to my to my mind straight away. It you've got, yeah. but you do have an opportunity there for kind of, I mean. I don't know, actually. I mean, do you have an opportunity, though, for the kind of interesting biomes that you've seen in previous, especially, say, the last few? Are there going to be as many biomes in that region? It's very kind of very kind of wet countries. And, you know, if I'm getting this completely wrong, yes, I know there are beaches and things like that there, but I don't know. I don't know it well enough. But just off the top of my head, it just doesn't feel like that there would be. But I don't know. I could be completely wrong there. Um, I think I think that these things are kind of adding up, though. They definitely seem to. They are at least correlating. I, I think I wouldn't. They don't feel like they are talking about those three leaks there. They don't feel like three separate games to me. They feel like that there is some kind of correlation, at least. Um, that could all be rubbish. The only one that I think we can trust at the moment is the first leak that we had, because obviously the leaker is very reliable. 
Um, whereas the other two, yes, they have been published online, but I, d I don't know enough about where the information came from um, regards to the fact that they're casting at the moment. But I don't know. I don't know how their casting works. I mean, maybe they I haven't looked on their website, to be honest, to see if there's casting. Would they go and give that information away? I don't know where that comes from. Where How do they send those out to specific agents of voice actors i've no idea how that process works to be honest so if you know let us know um because i'd be interested but i i think it just goes all the way back though going a circle all the way back so what you've heard so far i think it's very hard to say put a judgment on whether people will like it or not if you removed the first person only aspect from this most people would but yet we were told say all the rest was definite I don't think anyone's going to have an issue with any of this stuff at the moment because there's just not enough there. Um, but, but I still think you can't, to me, it doesn't really matter what you get told at the moment. I, even me, myself, I'm having a big, big issue getting over this first person only thing. Uh, I, I can't get over that issue. I, I can't believe that they would be that short sighted to U turn a franchise that was going in the right direction. Ubisoft have got some issues at the moment, um, which we won't go into at the moment, but we save that for another conversation. But they have issues where look at where they were going with Wildlands. I mean, that is a game that went in the right direction. Was it perfection? No, not in terms of how you look at the game now and go, oh, if only it had this and that. I get that. But I mean, at the time when it released, it was to me, yes, there was a few issues with the game you expect in kind of open world games but i mean compared to star wars outlaws at the moment christ i mean wildlands released almost flawless um it, to me it's more I, I just think i don't understand why you move away from a winning formula does that make sense yeah i th i think ubisoft has had a problem for a while where instead of focus on, on its own unique selling points it has been very it's moved more to, towards chasing trends and I think if you look at the, the cancelled front um, front line I think that was a perfect example of Ubisoft trying to jump onto a trend that was already far too late I and agree let's not forget that was also that was also a first person Sure, and when that when that debuted, when that premiere debuted, the world reveal it did not go well. No, it did not go well at all. We've covered that obviously many times before. That was a disaster. Um, but then, in that case, you wonder why they haven't looked at that. Why didn't they look at that? Or did they think it was because it was just a battle royale? But it wasn't just the Battle Royale thing, because other people seem to still be able to keep the Battle Royale thing going. Now, all right, they were more games that kind of were part of the... They've been known for Battle Royale a lot longer than Ghost Recon ever would have been had that game come out. But I just think that overall, it, from the feedback at the time, it was... Yes, there was a lot of anti-Battle Royale and chasing trends but there was just as much or if not 55 percent of it was why on earth is this kind of fps and i think that's a big problem if it was just the odd comment here or there then i could understand them going yeah who cares but i think if you're going to add first person i don't know i don't know why you would alienate as i said earlier you would say we're doing this in third but you can change to first because we've seen people enjoy the mods that's the way to go if you want to bring in new players you want to play first person say call of duty players who don't play ghost recon that's how you bring them in you don't bring in people and then not care about the things the the things that the community is asking for and that leads me on to my last point before we finish but if they haven't listened to that, and that's fundamentally one of the most important things that people wanted, it makes you wonder what else there could be. 
you know, when we start getting more details of the game, what else are we going to find that they went, yeah, we know that you've wanted this for ages, but we're not doing it. You know, it does concern me slightly that such a big thing has been ignored. Um, but I mean, we could be wrong. So that's the thing. That's we have to until they officially say straight like in some kind of thing it is first person only and they tell us why it went first person only then at the moment it is yes i'd say it's 99.9 percent .9 though because of who the leaker is but overall i think it it could be that third's in there and he just didn't mention it or the person he spoke to the leaker or whether who spoke to tom henderson just didn't mention the third person bit or maybe it wasn't finalized or maybe they hadn't finished it or or whatever for whatever reason um any closing thoughts before we head off we're going to try and keep these formats to around the kind of half an hour maximum 40 minutes but sometimes it might only be 10 as i said earlier um this was just an overview because i did think there were some things in here that hadn't been discussed before that people didn't know about and maybe hadn't heard of so we thought we would just give them a little cover kind of go through everything that we knew about over um sandy um just any last thoughts before we go two um one the first one is i just hope and pray that they're using the the community charter that was put up by member, members of the community, including members of people that used to be on Delta Company, and they're building the game around what that asked for. And two, I hope they're looking at all the all the comments and all, all these people that are saying that if third person is not in it, that they're not going to buy it. I think they really need to look at that and go, we need to have third person in this in one way, shape or another. And that's the I worrying think if it's thing. Just a, if it's just another first person shooter, if it's just another first person shooter, you know, you've got Six Days in Fallujah coming out, you've got uh, Grey's on Warfare, you've got Call of Duty, Ready or Not, Battlefield, you've got Black or all Down. these other first person shooters that are well established. They've got the, they've got a dedicated, yep, yeah, they've got a whole dedicated kind of a community behind them. I think it's going to be really hard to get them to jump ship and commit to this when they're in, like, Insurgency Sandstorm's another one. You know I mean? I can't even see how they're going to attract the people away. Uh, yeah, this has been said before. Basically, why would you jump out of the niche kind of... Not niche, that's probably not the right word, but why would you... Your unique position as a tactical third-person shooter, why would you jump out of that space when you could shift 16 million copies, which is way more than a lot of these other games out there and throw yourself into the space where there's the Tarkovs of the one, all these other games. Why would you throw yourself into that space? I don't understand why you would do that. And the only way you would do it is by offering both. Let's not forget as well that there has been some surveys sent out this week. A Squad Gaming did a good video on that. Um, but interestingly enough, you know, the surveys, a lot of people didn't get the survey. I never got it. Um, and yeah, obviously, it, it, no, exactly. And it, it, but it did ask questions about Ghost Recon, which kind of is infuriating because it, they know, they know who has, um, you know, put the survey. If you have a survey and you want to ask people questions about Ghost Recon, put it on the front titles of the game. They used to put it like, oh, if you want to join Delta Company, click here. Put it on the front of the game. We have a survey, click here and fill it out. Why is it just. Let's send it to a couple of people, you know, and so people have to hunt for it or ask someone else to tell them about it. I, I, that to me is crazy. You're asking questions about yeah. Ghost Recon. You're looking for information from people. So why would you do that? And I want to shout out AI yeah. Blue Fox because obviously he was responsible for that awesome charter that you mentioned. I just want to say one other thing. So I'm talking about the survey. Um, I had quite a good response to maybe why I haven't been given it. Maybe Ubisoft have just had enough of hearing for the periods. You know, possibly. it's not like, but then, it's yeah, not like we possibly. didn't survey bomb them for about a year. We did. Yes, we did survey <laughs> bomb them. More <laughs> than a year. Probably two years that we survey yeah. bombed the hell out of them. Yeah. 
yeah. But then, you know, that information, you know, was uh, was when it comes down to it, that information well, was again, important and, because it was from the community. Yep. And I, I know if we speak in a uh, community dev who's no longer at, um, on the Ghost Recon team, I know if, if we speak to them personally that they, they were shown their surveys, they were briefed up and down the chain at Paris. Um, I'm not going to mention who that person is, even though they're not there, just in case. But yeah, I, I got that confirmed a few times that they were, their information and their surveys were, were critical to them. Yeah, and that was via the forum, so just wasn't it? Listening. Which, uh, rest yeah. in peace, rest in peace, uh, the forums. Forum slash Reddit. Yeah. So I actually got speaking to the, them personally on Reddit. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember you. Yeah, I remember you showing me. But yeah, so um, let us know in the comments below anything about over. You looking forward to it? Not looking forward to it? What are you worried about? Um, you know, have you heard of any other leaks that we've missed? Um, because there could be some. Um, you know, when do you think we might see it? Anything? Any over related things? If you've got something that you want us to discuss next, um, we might go down the rabbit hole of doing an episode where we actually discuss Ubisoft themselves which could be a dangerous one, but we might do that um, mm -hmm. maybe in a couple of episodes time. Uh, yeah. Let us know what you uh, want us to cover and we will cover it. So thank you so much for um, to my co-host Sandy and from me. Thank you so much. We are going to be back way more regularly. Uh, this is far more easier for me to stay in contact um, with everybody and talk to everybody. Um, it's just a much better system to get videos out there. So I appreciate that. So please don't hate on me because they're not full of gameplay and things like that. Um, but, you know, there will be videos with gameplay and, and, and all the rest of it coming that are separate to this. But we're going to be doing a lot of recon reports between, you know, now and Christmas. So um, we hope to engage with you. Thank you so much for sticking with us. And, of course, for 12,000 subscribers, which is the most important thing, Thank you so much. We did hit 12,000 recently. Thank you again. Take care. We'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.